<clears throat> All right, I think they think if you've gotten to uh, this point in Algebra 2, you're pretty smart and uh, you should be able to handle some challenges. All right, so we've got two challenges for you today. And uh, in simplifying, what do they call these? Um, fractions and equations to simplify complex fractions. There we go, complex fractions. Um, and they give us two methods. They want us to do four of them using method one, where we find the least common denominator of both the top and the bottom and multiply through by that. And then the second method is called the quotient method. So I'm gonna help you get two of these really tough problems set up and uh, then you can finish them. And there's a couple of tips I wanna give you along the way here, okay? So stick with me. Let's take this first, and uh, a lot of times I have students will look at this and say, oh, I see what I'm supposed to do, x to the negative one, if I take that to the other side, it'll become positive x, and take that down, it'll become positive y, bring these up, and I have x to the third plus y to the third. And wouldn't that be easy if we could do that? But um, we're actually not allowed to do that because these are protected quantities, I call them, okay? So we can't take something that has a plus or a minus in between them and just flip it to the other side. So let's show you what we have to do here, all right? <clears throat> we have to take this as its own individual term and write it as one over x plus one over y. And then that's all over 1 over x to the third plus 1 over y to the third. Okay, so each of these terms we had to invert. Now we're going to find out what is the least common denominator up here. It would be x, y. But down here it's x to the third, y to the third. So actually of all four of these denominators, x, to the third, y to the third is the least common denominator. So we're going to multiply through top and bottom by that least common denominator. Let's see what happens. When we multiply this times just this first term, one of these x's cancels out. So I end up with x squared y to the third plus, take it times this, one of the y's cancels out, x to the third y squared. And I can hear you saying, Mr. Anger, this does not look like it's getting simpler. <laughs> Simplify, and this is not getting simpler. Well, here we go, follow with me. Now here, what happens? <clears throat> the x to the third cancels the x to the third. And I have y to the third plus, now the y third cancels that, and I have x to the third. Okay? Is there a common factor that I can take out of this to try to simplify just the numerator? And it looks like I can take out x squared and y squared. x squared y squared times the quantity y plus x. Okay, everybody with me? <clears throat> now, here's where they're expecting you to remember something from way back, like one or two paces ago. And that is that when we have a quantity to the third power, there's a pattern that we have to follow. And um, I think we did some problems on the board and I showed you a pattern, but I don't know if you still have it memorized. Basically it's, um, here I'll do it right here. If we have first term to the third plus the second term to the third, then this is gonna be F plus s times f squared minus fs plus s squared. Do you remember if this is minus, then this is minus. If this one's plus, then this one's plus. Whatever this one was, this one is the opposite. And then the last one is always positive, plus. So we're gonna follow this pattern that we hopefully will have memorized, or you can look it up if you have to. If you still have your old paces, you can go back and find this one. So we're going to factor the x or the y to the third plus x to the third into this pattern. So the first term is the x, or excuse me, the y. So parentheses y plus x. And then y squared minus xy 
plus x squared. <gasps> Do you see what I see? This term on the top is now the same as this term on the bottom. Boom, boom. You can cancel those out, and what that's, it looks like what's left, yeah, the, the term that's left is your answer, because we can't factor that any further. Let's look at method two, which says this divided by this will give me the answer, okay? First thing I want to do, though, is uh, get a common denominator just in the numerator. So this would become x minus 1 over x minus 1 plus 2 all over x minus 1. So I just multiplied, this is like 1 over 1. All right, so now I did the x, plus, x minus 1 plus 2. Ooh, look at that, I can actually simplify negative 1 plus 2 and have plus 1, okay? Now, let's figure out if we have any common factors here in the denominator. x times x plus 1 over, and then we're going to factor this and see what I get. x, x, one of these has to be 2 and one of these 1. I want the middle term, so positive, negative, that will give me a positive 1 in the middle. Negative 2 for our last term. Now, I know this looks confusing. We have all these things stacked on top of each other. This division right here, this line, is the same thing as saying divided by, all right? So I could say this divided by this. But remember what the rule is when you're dividing by a fraction, you take the second one, flip it upside down, and then you can multiply. So let me write x plus 1 over x minus 1 times, and I'm going to flip this upside down, x plus 2 over x minus 1, whoops, all over x times x plus 1. Okay, so I flip this upside down, that's what this is, and now instead of this divided by this, I'm multiplying. Now we can just you know, compare these. I like to put these in parentheses just so I can see that I have protected quantities. I have x plus 1 on the top here. Do I have any x plus 1's over here? Yep, right here. So I can cancel that. I have an x minus 1 here and an x minus 1 here, so those two will cancel. And I think you can see what that one should end up to be. Let me just... Um, <clears throat> verify so I'm not I just want to make sure I'm not leading you astray yep we did it okay we helped you with two of them and again the answer the score key has all the steps for all of them so that you can go back and look at the steps that they followed or that they did and try to follow what they're doing and see if you missed something or did one little thing wrong and that is the challenge with these Algebra 2 problems, you know, one little negative sign, one little boo-boo, and the whole answer can be completely different. So just be careful, but hopefully some of these tips that we gave you will help you as we work through the rest of the problems on this page.